So let's get started here. My name is Gary Lem and I provide technical sales support services for Canada and Northeastern US. What we're going to do is we're going to cover the Epson Project Professional Tool and we're going to describe what it does and its value in the marketplace. We're going to actually create a project and uh, look at the two different windows that are possible. One is a uh, layout and monitoring window and then the settings window. And within there, we're actually going to dive straight into the software. So I'm going to actually launch it. We're actually going to see how it would be the cause and effect is going to happen within some of the, the tabs. One is the lens control, the uh, lens control as well as the initialization, as well as uh, the geometric correction. When it comes to the edge blending, screen matching, color calibration, black levels and scaling, that's going to go back to the, the PowerPoint presentation. Okay, so what exactly is this professional projector tool? It's software that allows users to adjust and control projector, projected images from network projectors and monitor their stats. So as Epson entered the high lumen projector market, we asked our customers for a wish list. The number one requirement was something to simplify our projector configuration, hence the development of the projector professional tool. It's a free download from the Epson website and it's compatible both with Windows and Mac OS. So when compared to IR remotes, the Epson Projector Professional Tool, or EPPT for short, with its uh, GUI interface reduced setup and configure times on average by about 56%. So very, very valuable. So some of the features we're going to cover today include the, the layout, and we're going to touch on lens control, ends, edge blending, geometric correction, color uniformity, tiling assist, screen matching, color calibration, and some of the monitoring and operations of that software. Okay, so where can we find the software? It's a free download, as I mentioned, and there is the URL. And if that's a handful, uh, just go to the homepage, support, other products, Epson software, and then you'll find the Epson Projector Professional Tool software. And it's compatible with versions of Windows from 7 to 10, and Mac OS, it's 10.12 to 15. And a couple of notes, just uh, be aware that not all features are available for all projectors, so you have to consult your Epson account manager for details. And for best results, adjust the projector settings only after you've left it on for 20 minutes, and it gives the projector and image a chance to stabilize. Okay, so when you launch EPPT or Epson Projector Professional Tool, you're gonna to be greeted with this web page. I mean, through this opening page. And uh, we have two options. One is open a project. So if you have some existing project files, you can launch that and it'll pull it up. And it has a .eprj extension and you can just load up any pre-existing files that you created. In the top right-hand corner here, you have a few different options, and these are more just uh, language options. So you can toggle between Japanese and English and two different theme colors. You have a black option as well as a white one. And the system will go out in certain intervals and, and uh, ping all the available projectors on the network, and it defaults at 30 seconds, but you have an option from 50, I'm sorry, five to 60 in increments of five. So just leave it at 30. So that was the three dots. So we're gonna start a new project. And so we're gonna have two different um, views here. So the first one we have is our layout monitoring view. And I have the ability to grab my projector in this panel view it's called. I can grab a projector, move it around. If I like the particular position, I can lock it and, and it's locked. I have the ability to create these groups. And typically these are designed with screen matching and tiling system mind. So if we just uh, hover around the information section, uh, the information is pretty much identical for both. So it says here, check the bottom before you do screen matching as well as you can slot in tiling assist as well. So for each of the projectors in the group, make sure they're compatible with the screen matching or tiling assist. The projector panels for the group projectors form a rectangle and every projector panel for the group projectors are lined up with no gaps. So we want rectangles and no gaps between. And that will help with those two other applications we're gonna look at. If we like particular settings, we can save it. And this is really cool here. So what we can do is we need to find our projectors. So I can remove that and I can do a quick search. And there we go. And there's the refresh button. So if you can't wait every 30 seconds, we can hit the refresh button. 
And if we cannot find that projector through the automatic search, there's a manual IP address that we can type in as well. Okay, so this is a panel view. As I work my way around to the bottom, you may not see this, but there is remote control here. So I can actually turn off the projector, switch between the different sources, uh, open and close the shutter, just like that. And so we have a secondary view, which is this list view. And this is a good one for monitoring because what it does, it provides you with, with a list of uh, 20 projectors that are on the network and we're able to determine the status, power on and off, a, and the internal temperature. So this is a gauge as a visual. It's got five different blocks from a cool blue to a sort of red hot. So indicating that the, the internal temperature of that projector is really hot. So if we do see something like that, we can just literally turn it off and let it cool off. Okay, so that is that for the layout monitoring window. We'll take a look at the settings. That's kind of what people really use the software for. And typically work from left to right. And so the first thing we should see here is our lens control. And we have the ability to, as it says here, we can adjust our focus, zoom in. So if I zoom in a bit, we'll see a change on the screen. It's a little bit smaller. And lens shift, if you're not familiar, what we ideally would like to do is maintain the integrity of the, the image. And we usually physically move the lens so that we maintain that. With, and we can do that by actually just grabbing this. So I'm gonna select this home position and we'll see what happens when I select it. And the screen itself is gonna drop down a little bit, almost out of frame here. So I'm gonna just grab it and pull it right up. And you can see it just moving accordingly. And there is a nice feature here that if you do this for a handful of them or a regular basis, we actually have some memory positions. So I have up to 10 different memory positions that I can save. So I can save it. I can rename it. So we'll call it like the um, high. And then we can load it. So if I have my back in the home position and I really like for a specific location, I don't have to play around with the the different arrow keys, I can literally just load up my high memory position and I'll just recall that instantly. So you can see how much of a time saver that is. And we're up. And we also have the option to adjust, apply test patterns if you're setting screens, colors, that sort of thing as well. So they're just down here in the bottom right hand corner. Initial settings. This is where you can reset all the different uh, memories, uniforms, and configs. Uh, the one thing you can use here is the, the light source mode. So we have the ability, it's currently on quiet. I have the ability to tag on the custom and I can drop that down. And what the camera is probably going to do is compensate for the light difference. So you may not see that, but I dropped it down to 30. Edge blending, we're going to skip, we're going to actually do that as a PowerPoint, and geometric correction. So this is the last of the, the active. So here we typically would use our remotes and, and, and try to find our way around here. So the first thing we have is um, keystone correction. And as, as I slide this, you're going to see this adjust and, this, and the image will adjust on your screen as well. I can do that with the vertical hold as well. If I want, I can reset it back to its original. And the other one that is quite popular is our quick corners too. So let's just reset that. So we'll just grab a corner, pull it in. I can select this corner here and be a little precise and use the number of pixels and move it in 30 pixels. And I can save it. I'll export it. We'll call it quick corner here. You see, save it. Great. So if I reset this, again, everything is all about simplifying the installation and setup. So if I go to my file, import it, there's the file. Everything lines up. It's a 1405. Here's my lens. There's my resolution. And away you go. And bang, we're done. Okay. So quick little things just to make your life easier.
And the last thing we're going to look at is this point correction. So this allows us to blend images if the surface is, is not quite smooth. We have to choose between uh, three, three by three, a five by five, a nine by nine, as well as a 17 by 17 point correction. So really what we can do here is if there's uh, some inconsistency on the screen, I actually grab this, just move it. It's gonna be kind of hard to see on the screen because it's blended. So I'm just gonna grab something that's a little bit further down, maybe down here. You can see how that kind of warps that image a bit. Okay, so it gets a little bit funny near that bottom right hand corner. And again, I have the ability to save that and load it as well. So those are the, the big pieces that we can do with the software itself. I'm gonna have, I don't have the luxury of two projectors, so we're gonna to have to use the PowerPoint presentation uh, to walk through the edge blending pieces. So edge blending occurs when you combine or overlap the edges of two or more projectors in a multi-screen setup. So when you place two projectors side by side, the human eye will notice a uh, hard edge, mismatch colors, different brightness levels, and poorly over overlap images. This innate ability to no notice differences makes edge blending so, so challenging. So you can use the adjustments on the edge blending tab to create a single seamless image from multiple projectors. Before you use that edge blending, we've got to do a couple things. We've actually got to group those projectors based on the relative location. So we gotta go back to that layout monitoring tab. We're gonna select our projectors. We're gonna select edit group and we're gonna group those projectors. We'll go back and a few more steps. So we actually have to go to the image tab and we need to select in the color mode, multi-projection. And then we go back to our edge blending. So there's quite a few different steps to, to get this done. Uh, we're gonna turn edge blending on. And when we're blending, we have to tell, this, tell the, um, the software what we're blending. So there's typically these two, two scenarios, ones where you're stacking one on top of the other. So if we're doing the top projector, you just click on the bottom edge, you select the, the bottom projector, top edge, and likewise with the left projector and right projector in a side-by-side -side mode, which is the more traditional of the two. And so also we have to just make sure everything kind of lines up. So we also need to adjust the image position with lens shifting and the size of zoom so that the respective, in this case, the red and the green guidelines overlap and become yellow. And I also recommend using a, a black test pattern just so that everything shows up and it's easy to see. So when that's done, we go to edge blending, we hit the tiling assist, and then it starts, um, it starts uh, producing these, uh, these test patterns, and then the camera's gonna pick that up and to relay that, that information back to the, the software to, to build our, our edge blended image. Uh, sometimes things don't line up properly, so you have to do a few little tweaks. So if, um, if you do run into a couple of hiccups, you're gonna run into probably this first one, which is the end blending range setting. And here you need to just adjust the values accordingly and hit apply. And then if you want to check on the display pattern and you, if you need to adjust your focus, your zoom by using the, the arrow keys as well and the next button. And finally, if you need to adjust the shape correction, click on that tab and then you can adjust the points and you can use those arrows. After you're done, things should all line up. Uh, the one thing we want to be aware of, there are some conditions to make sure that this tiling works. Uh, as we mentioned before, is that the projector panels in the group, uh, they're positioned in a rectangular shape and there's no gaps in that layout. The screen surface must be flat. Projectors are connected on the same network. The screen is matte, white, and diffused. And in terms of mirror size, uh, it's 100 to 200 for a 4K image and 100 to 300 for a WUXJ image. So once that's all said and done, there's, that gets you to about 95% of where you need to be. Sometimes you need to do a little fine tuning. That's the last little bit we're gonna cover here. So during the edge blend, overlapping error is gonna be a little bit brighter. And what you're gonna use is something called the projector black level tab to make that difference less noticeable. So our black level tab 
And what we're going to do is we're presenting two options. One is color adjustment. So uh, this adjusts the brightness and the tone of the areas that don't overlap to match the areas that do overlap. And you're going to use these uh, sliders to, to make it match manually, just a little bit fine tuning. And then we also have an area correction. So if the tone of some areas don't match, you can adjust them using the uh, area correction settings and then select the areas uh, to adjust and you're gonna use those arrow keys to, to adjust those boundary lines as well. So again, just a little bit of fine tuning. And last but not least, there's uh, this uh, screen matching. So this is actually going to match the brightness and the colors of the projectors so they look alike. So in the image tab, we're gonna tap on the color matching, screen matching, and we're done. And one last thing you may want to do, so color calibration automatically adjusts the color tone of the entire screen based on the default color settings. And this compensates for any deterioration in color over time. And to do that, you're going to click on color calibration and start color calibration. So one final thing we can do is we can actually crop and scale portions of the projected image to build uh, a little more cropped scaled image. So we do that through the scale tab. So you can select from auto and manual within the auto settings, image or cropping, spanner correlating to the aspect ratio. So in scale, you can select auto, and then we hit aspect, you can convert from auto to horizontal zoom, which is H zoom. And over here, you can see how that cropped image is going to look. Okay, so we saw how the Epson projector professional tool could simplify things like lens control, geometric correction, uh, really simplify the edge blending, and then it'll do all the other heavy lifting terms of screen matching, color calibration, and then we'll do a little fine tuning with our black level adjustments, and also has the ability to scale as well.